In this video we're going to work through this word problem. Now this is a word problem that you might be given just as the statement up here, um, but this is from a section in the textbook where they've actually broken it down into parts. So first thing we're going to do is read it. Gregory works half as many hours per week as Paul. Between the two they work a total of 48 hours in one week. So this is an example of a question where we have to come up with a systems of equations and then we solve it. So there's a five-step process here. First step one is we're going to declare our variables. So I'm going to say let g represent number of hours Greg worked and we're going to let P present the number The second step in our process is we are going to define equations. So really this second step in the process is really part A and part B. Write an equation to represent the information in the first sentence, write an equation to represent the information in the second sentence. Essentially this question is trying to teach you how to go through the process of setting up a system of equations to solve a problem. So they're telling you the steps to work through. So the first equation, if Gregory works half as many hours as Paul works, Gregory works half as many hours per week as Paul. So Gregory's hour is equal to one half of the hours that Paul works. And this is equation one. The second sentence, between the two they work a total of 48 hours in one week, that means that G plus P is equal to 48, and that's equation 2. So we've just done part A and B. Equation 1 is the equation represented rep that represents the information in the first sentence. Equation 2 is the information that is represented in the second sentence. So they tell us specifically here to use the method of substitution to find the number of hours worked by each of them. But again, if we want to think about a larger variety of questions, you really want to look at your system of equations and make, make an informed choice based on the situation. The reason why substitution is really nice here is because G is already isolated for, so I can substitute directly in. So step three is we're going to solve equations. So, we're going to sub 1 into 2, so therefore 1 half P plus P equals 48. And now I'm going to clear the fractions by multiplying both sides by 2, so if we multiply each term by 2, P plus 2P equals 48 times 2 is 96, so 3p equals 96, and we're going to divide both sides by 3, so p is equal to 32. And I feel pretty good about that because it's less than 48. If I got a value that was negative or a value that was greater than 48, I would stop and check my work because because that doesn't make sense in context to this problem. So now that we have P, we need to solve for G. So we're going to sub P equals 32 into, and we can sub it into any equation that we want here, but I'm going to sub it into equation 1 because I used equation 2 to actually solve for P. So therefore, G is equal to 1 half times 32 
and half of 32 is 16. Now our next step is to check and we check by substituting our two values into our original equations. Now you don't have to do both, you can if you want, so we're going to sub Oh, let's change back to blue. We're going to sub g equals 16 and p equals 32 into equation 2. So therefore, 16 plus 32 equals 48. And we do what's called a left side, right side check here. So we're going to simplify both sides and see that they're the same. 32 plus 16 is in fact 48. So I feel good about this answer. So I'm going to come down here and give myself a check. And the last step with the system of equations is we have to give a statement. So therefore, Paul works 32 hours. Greg works 16 hours. And there's the solution to our system of equations. So again, this is a problem that requires you to set up a system of equations and solve it. Um, it's broken up into A, B, and C to help illustrate kind of the process of how you would do this. Um, Typically, you would just be given the question part. You would just be given this part here, and you'd have to figure out A, B, and C without that, those kind of hints. When we're solving a system of equations, we can follow this nice step-by-step -step process. So we're going to follow our five steps. We're going to declare our variables, which is very important. We sometimes say we make let statements. We're going to define the equations. Then we're going to solve the equations using whichever method is best. We could use substitution. We could use elimination. We could use, if we want, even graphing, though graphing is not ideal if, if, the, if the questions, the numbers don't work out nicely, or if they're really large. And so then we're going to work through. And once we get our two values, we're going to do this check. A check is really important. Um, good mathematicians always go back and check their work, and they can often make statements whether or not they can, sorry, they can go back and be sure whether or not they've, they've done the question correctly. And finally, we have a concluding statement. I hope that video helped. If you have any questions, as always, don't hesitate to ask.